SpaceX is standing down on Starlink launches. What does that mean for those who are waiting patiently or impatiently to get their hands on a Dishy McFlatface? Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on the state of Starlink, SpaceX's massive satellite constellation designed to bring fast, low latency internet to basically everyone everywhere eventually. So uh, when we last did a big update on Starlink in July, they had just finished launching the first full shell of their satellite constellation. So over 1,500 satellites um, going into their final orbits that would be able to give them uh, coverage throughout most of the world, not the poles, but a big chunk of the planet once they reach their final orbits. Great, they got that first shell up. That was just the first of many, many shells in the first phase of Starlink. And we were expecting that over the summer, SpaceX was going to begin launching their next wave of Starlink shells and filling in more capacity, more coverage, adding coverage to the poles and everything else. Well, the summer has gone on and there has not been a full Starlink launch since back in May. What's going on? Well, we at last, at last know why SpaceX has stopped launches. At the Space Warfighting Industry Forum this past week, SpaceX um, Chief Operating Officer and President Gwynne Shotwell shared that they are standing down from launches for a couple reasons. For one, they are being impacted by the same chip supply shortages that are impacting so many other industries. So they're having a hard time getting the parts they need to build satellites and presumably the dishy receivers. And so they're having some production delays. They're waiting for chips that are you know, being slow to be manufactured. Um, she said that they hope to be over the chip hump by October. And then for the other, they're just kind of taking advantage of this delay to finish the design for the next generation of the Starlink satellites that will actually use laser interlinks. So rather than have to have the signal go from you to a satellite and back down, the laser interconnected version of Starlink will allow the signal to go from you to satellite to satellite to satellite back down. In the United States, that's not going to really matter because there's so many Starlink ground stations, but for anybody who is hoping to have Starlink coverage out to sea or in more remote areas, that lets them deploy coverage without deploying ground stations and is a key part of the future of Starlink's evolution. So they're like, well, okay, we're pausing, we're going to take some time, and we're going to get that next design with the lasers working. So so what does this mean? They're, 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 they're slowing down the rollout of Starlink. Um, she also said that you know, people were hoping that the end of this first shell launching would be the end of SpaceX calling Starlink beta and um, opening up service to a broader invitation, more people, no waiting lists, you know, letting anybody who wants to sign up for Starlink. Well, she kind of <laughs> put that to rest and said, no, they're, they're going to be in beta for a while. And it actually might be five years before everyone who wants Starlink will be able to get it. So I know a lot of people are excited about Starlink. They want to be able to get it immediately. They think by the end of this year, it's going to be their ultimate universal solution. Um, it takes time to build such a huge, big, giant, ambitious constellation. And well, you know, particularly the realities of this all, it's going to take SpaceX a while before they're ready to turn it on for absolutely everyone. Now, this current delay is, when are they going to get back to launches? It might be in a month, it might be two months, might be three months. They might hold off until early 2022, and all these new satellites are fully in the queue and ready to go, and they could go back to a rapid pace of launching. So that's kind of the, the update on you know, the, the, the bad news on Starlink is it's not coming as fast as some of us have hoped. There is some other exciting news, though, for who people who want Starlink and who want to take it mobile. Uh, SpaceX has filed in the last few weeks with the FCC for permission to begin selling, offering a new ruggedized, high-performance version of the Starlink receiver. Uh, what, is, what does this actually mean? Well, there's you know very little actual information in the FCC filings other than confirming the radio frequency bands it would use and that it's going to be more rugged, better designed for mobile. They actually mention RVs in the um, text of their FCC filing, but is it going to be more expensive? Is it going to, what's it going to look like? How big is it going to be? How small is it going to be? Is it going to perform the same better? 
All of that remains to be seen. And of course, what remains to be seen is once the FCC grants permission, how long will they be able to bring this mobile rugged version of Starlink into existence? But for those who've been craving mobile Starlink, well, yes, they are working on it. For those who invested in the first generation hardware, well, you might've gotten in a little bit too early. You know, we've been saying all along, if you're interested in Starlink, it is super, super exciting, but there's a lot of good reasons to keep waiting until the coverage is there, the hardware is ready, mobility is officially supported, as opposed to kind of this hackish way that people are dealing with it right now, and so on. Now, Starlink SpaceX has a huge, huge future, a long roadmap plan for Starlink expanding. They've also recently filed with the FCC for more sharing more details on their second generation of Starlink. So they've got like a whole decade long plan here. The second generation is going to be 30,000 satellites that they'll be launching in their SpaceX Starship 400 at a time eventually. So there is a lot of stuff in the pipeline to eventually be able to deliver Starlink, well, to provide the capacity to try and meet some of the demand that is out there. And the demand is high. Well, one other thing uh, Gwen shared was that they now have 100,000 people on the Starlink network worldwide, um, 600,000 people on the waiting list who have placed pre-orders that they haven't been able to, you know, to, to fulfill or serve just yet. And um, there are actually quite a few RVers who have gotten the Starlink and who are been experimenting with taking it mobile. And to mix success, it has a frustrating experience because a lot of areas don't have Starlink service turned on just yet. And a lot of other areas that they try and move the service to are already at capacity. And you get kind of an error message if you try to move and relocate your Starlink to an area that is at capacity. And you can play games and try to like assign your address to somewhere within 20, 30 miles of where you're actually at. And you might get a little bit of service or service with a lot of interruptions, but there's a whole lot of trade-offs on Starlink right now for our mobility. We're not going to reiterate all those trade-offs. Go watch our previous video and see the article that we put out in July that went over all the, you know, basically the current state of Starlink, all the trade-offs, all the downsides, and, you know, all the implications for our mobility. But in conclusion, over time, very, very exciting stuff. A lot of progress happening, just maybe not as fast as you are dreaming, hoping, wishing that it would. <laughs> she wants her Starlink. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.